Talk Show. Recorded live. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is the regular Wednesday night uh, U- University of Eucadia Talk Show. Uh, your host tonight and, and speaker is uh, Frank, Franco Collins. Thank you all who have come on to here tonight on Wednesday, the 22nd of June, 2011. Uh, Terry Lynn uh, passes on her apologies. She has again been stuck with bad weather where she is and thoughts and prayers go out to her and all those in the States that have been experiencing unprecedented bad weather in this year. So hopefully Terry will be back next week. Tonight I will be juggling talking with you as well as fielding questions so thank you for your patience thanks to all those who are listening tonight live and also those that will be downloading this call from either TalkShoe or from the University of UK website which is uh, http uh, university.ukadia.info that's university.ukadia.info Well, tonight I want to cover a subject that I think just won't go away. It's one that continues to uh, raise itself. It is, as I just mentioned with the weather of Terry, it is the issue of climate change, Elenin, the uh, clear evidence that we are going through an unprecedented period of uncertainty and in fact as I speak tonight I understand that there has been yet another earthquake in Japan 6.7 so we are dealing with an unprecedented time and as much as we've seen the turmoil and the tragedy in Japan and yet again potentially tonight and we've seen it in New Zealand, and we've seen it in the volcanoes, and we've seen it uh, right throughout the world in different places, and the tornadoes and the terrible devastation in America. There's every evidence to suggest that this is merely still the beginning. So while I know that many of you come to Eucadia looking for the specific answers to concerns in terms of the relentlessness of the IRS. I know that many come because you are losing your home. I know that many come because you're facing court action or that you are in desperate needs of funds. For all these issues, they still run on the premise that tomorrow is promised and uh, the world will be the way we at least hope it will be, if not better, next year. So when we talk about issues as dramatic as Elenin, the concept of a dark star, or Nibiru, Planet X, whatever you want to call it, when we talk about uh, shifts in the crust, when we talk about major upheaval, issues of whether we can pay our credit card really become relegated down to the question of will we in fact be here next week, next year, 10 years time. And one of the themes that I've tried to share with all of you from the get-go when we speak about Eucadia is not necessarily that we need to learn new things, but merely that we need to remember who and what we are, to remember what our ancestors knew and believed. That life is a dream, a dream has rules, We are all part of the collective and when we focus our consciousness, we have the ability to change our destiny. So what I would like to do tonight, what I ask for those that are listening tonight and those that will be listening to the call later, is please help me, help you, help our world, by embarking on a specific process tonight. Tonight I'm going to ask you to visualize 
certain things and certain ideas that are much, much greater than our present problems. In fact, some might say that the ideas I'm going to share with you are beyond the possibility. They are in the realm of fantasy. But I'm going to ask you, please, if you can, to indulge me and to clear your minds and to visualize together the possibility of a future where we are no longer destroyers of planets, more than just being stewards of living planets, but creators of life. Ones that can bring back life to dead planets and specifically to Mars. And the reason I'm going to ask you to focus on this is that if life is a dream and all around us is unique collective awareness, then the sun is a conscious being. We are part of the sun. We are able to communicate with the sun. And whilst we are not trapped, but we are instanced in the bodies that we are, our collective mind does not have those same constraints. And if we are true in our intent, I have no doubt that as has been prophesied, that those that are true of mind can influence the future. So if the future and if the destiny that people fear at the moment is death and mayhem, disaster and Armageddon, and if it is true, as we say in UK, that life is a dream, a dream has rules, that everything is aspects of consciousness, then our collective consciousness tonight has the potential to influence the future. And I'm going to get in and explain why. I want to finish tonight normally, or just let me go through some, some ground rules in terms of how we normally do these calls. I'm going to speak for the next hour. And then at the end of that hour, I ask, please, if you have questions, and I'd love to hear from you, please, I'd love to hear by you pressing, I think it's star eight or hash eight. I'm sorry, I don't know whether it's star eight or hash eight, but if it's star eight or hash eight, then you'll be queued up and I would then love to hear from you. Or I ask you to put in your question by typing in question in capitals and then the question you'd like to ask. Before we talk about this visualization, and it is appropriate, I think, that we introduce this. I've made a promise to, to you, all of you, that in the canons of law, that cognitive law would be finished. And I promised that I would share with you a way of being able to review it. Well, I'm going to share you a link now uh, that you can go and see the work in progress of cognitive law on One Heaven. I'm going to give that to you in a moment. The reason that I haven't put the link up is that it's not yet finished. I did say that uh, we would have it finished, but in all of this, it's not a race. It's about getting it right. So I apologize that the link is not available directly from the homepage of one-heaven.org, but if you follow what I'm just about to give to you, then those that are on the call now and those that will be on the call when they listen to this later will be able to go and see it. Uh, there will be corrections to it, there will be refinements to it, and it will be completed. And I am working very hard to have it finished as quickly as possible. So the way to go and see this, the way to go and see this is to go to one-heaven.org. And when you get to the home page, I'm going to ask you to click on Positive Law, the link of Positive Law under Divine Canon Laws. So when that comes up, you'll see in the address of your particular browser, you'll see that there's an address that says one-heaven.org, then it'll say forward slash, then it will say canons, underscore, positive, underscore law, and then it'll just say article, underscore, and then four zeros. I'm going to ask you to change one thing on the address that you see when you click on positive law. I'm going to ask you to directly change that word positive to cognitive. That's C-O-G- N-I-T-I-V-E. That's C-O-G-N-I-T-I-V-E. And if you click on that and you change that, then what will appear is the canons of cognitive law. They have been loaded up. They're just not available live. And when that comes up, the first 60-odd 
or 66 of those articles uh, have been uh, prepared for you to review and I encourage you to read them because I'd like to refer to some of them tonight. And as I say, we will have this link finished uh, in the next few days. Well, cognitive law is all about the power of our mind. And part of the problem that we've faced for not just years, but centuries and in fact millennia, is getting an understanding of exactly how our mind works. Who are we? What are we? We hear the words body, mind, soul, but how many aspects are there to mind? If we've been brought up through psychology, we're told that we are components called the id, the superego, and the ego. We're told that we have ego. We're told that we have a soul. Some deny that we have a soul. Certainly psychology seeks, in many respects, to deny us as entities having souls, that we are merely animals with sophisticated routines. So getting a handle on who and what we are, in many respects, has been part of the life journey. We're not given this when we're born. We're not told this when we go to school. We're told that we have emotions, but what are those emotions? We're told that we have personalities, but who says that we are an introvert or an extrovert? Who is it to tell us that we are, uh, have the aptitude for this or the not aptitude for that? Who was it that created the intelligence quotient test and puts us into a box? What is the environment? Why do we do what we do? Why, if we have habits, do we find that it's difficult to break them? Why does our life seem to revolve around lessons that don't necessarily seem to resolve themselves? All of these things come back to understanding the nature of mind. So when you look at that link, you'll see that there are various sections there that have been prepared that delve into key areas, the concepts of cognition, mind, being, conscious, interconscious, subconscious, superconscious, ultraconscious. These may sound like new labels, and in many respects they are, but it goes to explaining a model of mind. Memory, mind virus. We've spoken about mind virus a number of times now. Ego being an ancient form of reptilian mind virus. Will, free will. Death, our immortality. We talk about perception and thought and the power of thought and how the power of conscious thought and right intent reverberates across not just our consciousness and our being but connects us together in unique collective awareness and has the power to change the physical because the physical is merely a manifestation of a dream. Thought, intent, words are the real and what we see and perceive is the reality, is the relative, is the dream. So really it's in reverse. What we think and perceive, what is our intent and our mind is the realm of reality and the collective that we assume to be real, that those that have created the political environment, the financial system, the artificial problems of their own making, that is the dream and we have the power to change it. Well, let us start on the visualization that I asked if you could please help with tonight. And I cannot underestimate the importance of it. So in order to do this, I'm going to give you another link that will help. And the link is the following. Give hyphen Mars hyphen life dot org. That's G I V E hyphen Mars hyphen life dot org. And all I ask you is when you type that in, please uh, go to the website and I'll explain the two parts to the visualization tonight. The first part of the visualization we're going to go through tonight is to explain why the giving of life to Mars and how the giving of life to Mars.